Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. Following up on yesterday's update aquatic livestream from Minecon Earth, I have a whole lot more information to share with you. This includes going over an interview with the Java Edition development team who answered many of the community's questions. But in the first part of this video we are going to go over all the additional information I found since the stream and if you didn't catch my recap video of what we saw at Minecon Earth there will be a link on your screen and in the description box below. So before we get into the details be sure to subscribe if you want more news and information on Minecraft updates and hit the like button if you want to support this content. So first of all we have a release date and logo for the update aquatic. This video was posted to the Team Mojang YouTube channel not long after the stream. On the thumbnail we can see the logo and then the title of the video tells us when the release is going to be. Let's have a look at the, the logo except a little bit larger. And the release date is going to be in Spring 2018 as the title of the video is The Update Aquatic is Coming to Minecraft Spring 2018. That could be late spring or early spring. It means it's going to be a few months but should be out in the earlier half of next year. Up second we have this screenshot that's zoomed in and slightly blurry but in the background we can see what looks like stone stairs. Now earlier in the live stream event there was a musical video and in that video you could clearly see stone stairs out and in the open so that's probably a good indicator that this will be added in the aquatic update. Now going back to that first screenshot you can also see oak wood blocks with the bark texture on all sides. Now I speculated that where Jeb was playing here could be a new structure added to the game and then commenters informed me that actually that's a realms map so whoever created that map probably put those blocks in using commands which probably means it's not coming to survival minecraft now the rest of the information before the java dev team interview comes from a conversation between jeb and one of the costume contest winners who asked jeb some questions behind the scenes at minecon earth and then shared those questions and answers with us via reddit First question, what was that mystery fifth mob image aka mob E? And Jeb answered that it was nothing more than a mock-up image, it literally meant nothing at all. Second question is about the bubble streams and Jeb answers confirming that there will be underwater ravines with bubbles coming out of them. If you swim over it in a boat the boat will sink, we already knew that and you'll also be able to breathe in the bubble streams and transport items through them. Now based on a few other things Jeb said as well, we know that these bubble streams are going to be vertical only, and also that your breath bar will no longer instantly regenerate. So if you think about when you come to the surface, your breath bar goes away and it goes back to normal, that's not going to be the same anymore. The next question is about combat changes and what specifically they are, and Jeb answers that blocking will no longer be with right click, it will be activated by shift clicking or walking backwards which is what happens on the bedrock edition of the game. PvP won't return to 1.8 PvP. Also the offhand will no longer be able to be used for placing blocks, mining or attacking. It's now only for shields, compasses, maps and items of that nature but you can still hold any item or block in your offhand. Now I don't need to tell you how bad that sounds, not being able to place torches or eat from your offhand just seems like they're removing a massive amount of functionality that people have now gotten used to after initially being skeptical about the offhand function. So there's probably going to be a bit of backlash on that one. Let's hope that they revise that idea and don't actually remove that functionality. The next question asks if they've seen the fix for ghost blocks and will they fix it? And the answer is yes, they're always trying to fix bugs. So hopefully that means that one specifically. This next question and answer gives us confirmation that the shipwrecks will be the places that we get treasure from. Not saying it's the only place, we know they're going to be in shipwrecks though. This question asks if the corals are new blocks, suggesting that they look like terracotta and the answer says that they are indeed new blocks, but the blocks shown were an old texture. So the ones that we saw in the video footage apparently are old textures now, so when we actually see the update and we're able to play it, we should see some new textures for the coral blocks. This question is about Mob B, the monster of the night skies, asking if you'll get attacked if you're not high up in the sky and Jeb answers that basically you have to be at least above sea level and high above in the ground and suggesting that you'd be up on a mountain or in an extreme hills biome to be attacked by this mob. 
And last of all, a couple of other things about Mob C, which probably will never get into the game now. Apparently it was going to be green and grey, and also it would be a large mob that was around the size of 3x3 three three blocks, which is probably comparable to a wither. Now that is something I would have really have liked to have seen, but unfortunately it's not going to be added to the game now. And now we can get to the main part of this video, the Q&A with the Java development team. And there are some fantastic questions and really interesting answers in this. If you would like to see the full thing, there'll be a link to it down below. I'm going to give you the summary of all of the questions and the answers here. The first question is from our boy Joe Hills on the Hermitcraft server asking, can we expect more slabs? And initially they say no, but it's just a little bit of a joke and that we can expect to see more slabs in the future of the game. There's a second question asking if we'll ever see vertical slabs once you can place on the side of blocks and the answer is that they don't think it fits the current vision for the game but possibly one day in the future they might consider it. Then we have two questions. Will there be more wooden pressure plates? Will there be wooden trapdoors? And then we see this screenshot confirming that there are going to be trapdoors and buttons added for each of the different wood colours in the future, which I think looks fantastic and I can't wait to get my hands on those blocks. This question is about the old and the new textures and what update it will be a part of and a very clear confirmation here that it's not planned to be a part of 1.13 or 1.14 but it's going to be a standalone resource pack which they will distribute when they're ready to do so. Players can add it to the game if they want to and then they'll take feedback from the community, change and tweak things and then at some point in the future they'll decide when they think it's ready and they'll put it into an update. This question is just a general one about seeing more things in the underground of Minecraft in the future and the answer is that they have been modifying the world gen code for a while to make it easier to add things so in the future we should see more features in caves, more things appearing above ground and this could possibly include underground biomes as well. So this question has a fascinating answer. The question is what was the reason for adding endermites and Dinnerbone goes into a fair bit of detail here explaining that they had a vision for another dimension which endermen would teleport through and when they teleported from one place to another they would go through that dimension and bring back parts of it with them and the endermite is actually a mob from that dimension. Now unfortunately they decided to take the end development in a different direction and they never really fleshed out those ideas and Dinnerbone says it's probably unlikely we'll ever see that but maybe one day in the future they might return to the idea. And the question that will always be asked, will there be a new boss mob? And the answer is not at the moment but in the future they will probably make another boss mob. Then we have a question asking if there will be controller support for Java and the answer is not in the near future plus they would need to redesign the overall UI of the game to do so. So if ever that is something that gets added it will probably be a long way off in the future. Will Bedrock exclusive features be added to Java Edition? If you're not aware there are some different features in some of the different versions of the game. The answer is that they're always walking towards having all the additions be as similar as possible but they don't have a timeline in which to do these things by. This question asks if they will implement bug fixes that players have come up with themselves as long as they've been tested by the community well and the answer is that yes they're always open to using a bug fix however they usually just point them in the right direction of where the actual root of a bug is and so things should just continue as usual and players should continue to suggest fixes. And last of all, a rather casual question for each of the developers. What was the hardest feature for them to get into Java Edition? Maria answered that getting torches on the back of stair blocks took her quite some time. Mobius said doing pathfinding was difficult. And what I found interesting about this is that they shared some screenshots with us that look like some sort of debugging edition of Minecraft where it shows you what the different mobs are going to do. Grum stated that the barrier block was difficult for him. Dinnerbones talks about how he spends lots of time doing little features and gave an example of portals. Apparently going through on one side of a portal will bring you out on the correct side in the nether. And little things like this are what he likes to work on but no one really notices. And last of all we had Lady Agnes who says that llama spitting took her a lot of time as they ended up spitting at each other and killing llamas and baby llamas. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. So if you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. As always, thank you for the support and consider subscribing if you haven't done so for some more Minecraft update videos. And I'll, of course, keep you informed on what's happening with the uh, aquatic updates on this channel and on my second channel as well, where I post smaller bits of news. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.